What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are going to dive into one of the techniques that stormed the bass fishing scene. I wanna say it was like, what, six years ago? Paul Elias was the first one to want to turn on this in like the fall and just crush them. An Alabama rig, okay? Umbrella rigs um, have been banned from the top level of bass fishing, but still, uh, Toyota series levels, um, you look at BFLs, a lot of local tournaments, smaller tournaments, um, you can still fish them. So you can't fish them on the BPT and the Major League Fishing or the Pro Circuit or the Elite Series, but everybody else has the opportunity to use them. I think a lot of times when I look back at this, I think about, like, I think a lot of these organizations freaked out it, because at the end of the day, this is like the first time when these baits came out, when the Alabama rig went out, it came out, it was like the most unbelievable thing because these fish had not ever seen it. They were seen five swim baits swimming together and like some blades and like all of a sudden they just, whoosh, big ones, big ones. I actually remember a time at Chickamauga, it was like four years ago and they literally, like, I mean, every time like all these, like I would go out, my buddies would go out, it'd be like 37, 38, 39 pounds, just crushed them. Now things have sort of come back to reality. Nature does a thing where they start to see it. Those fish start to see that particular deal. They don't bite it as much. An Alabama rig is still very, very effective though. And it's a technique that you definitely do not need to know. So I'm gonna dive into a couple of different things. Really, this is how to rig an Alabama rig, but I'm gonna go much more to more detail. Talk about some of the rigs that I throw, why I put certain heads this way, that way, all that good stuff. Great wintertime bait, pre-spawn bait. So we're gonna dive into this right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So the first thing you need to know about Alabama rig fishing is selecting the correct rod for the application. Now, understanding this is, you know, it just you just gotta have the right deal set up. So for me, I actually use sort of like what I would throw like a big giant crankbait on like a 10XD or a bigger profile plug. This is the Micromagic Pro 710. The 710 right here is pretty dang legit. It's a pretty good rod. It's a really good parabolic action rod. And that's what I throw for my, for my umbrella rigs. Now, as far as reel goes, I recommend lower gear ratio, six, three to one, because a lot of times in the winter time, you just slow that retrieve down. If you throw an eight, three to one or seven, three to one or seven, two to one or whatever, I just like that slower gear ratio. Cause ultimately I feel like I slow that retrieve down. And, and over the last few seasons, I've can definitely say that I get more bites in the winter time or in the pre-spawn in this situation. Now, if you're fishing, uh, you know, summertime, maybe you might speed it up a little bit, but that is what I would recommend. Now, as far as line, 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon, some lines are different. Diameter is the key. I throw uh, suffix, suffix fluorocarbon overall. And really I come into like the advanced. Um, it's a little bit of a thicker line. So I actually throw 20 most of the time, but I will throw 25 if I, if I need to, if I'm fishing around like wood and stuff. Now, now we got through that. I recommend, you know, a heavier action rod, but still parabolic. You don't need like, hold on, I'm about to name and break that rod. Hold up one second, guys. You don't need to like have a rod that's like specifically an Alabama rig rod, but I do not recommend a broomstick. Do, it does not seem to work that great on a broomstick. Actually, I like a rod that has a little little bit of tip, a moderate action, um, and that what's, that's what that rod has. There's pretty, you want a heavier rod, but you do not want like, this sucker does not move at all. Like there's no tip. Because what happens is they bite it and just, it just it's it just wears you out all day and then ultimately it's just a pain in the butt to throw. So now that we've gotten through that, we're gonna dive into some of the different rigs um, that I've thrown over the years um, and sort of like some of the reasons why I throw certain hooks um, and, and sort of like just my thought behind it. So let's do that right now. Um, right here is actually the rig that I just took off of my uh, off the rod I was throwing. I've been throwing this one all winter and actually you can sort of see uh, this guy right here has been getting teeth marks right there. Those are teeth marks. That's from fishing, catching the heck out of them. Now, um, in Tennessee, you are only allowed to have three hooks. You'll see there's three hooks on this particular, this particular rig. There is two that have dummies. Um, now you can go, you, there's actually like three prong or three, um, three bait rigs that I, I could see you potentially going to. And I have, I remember even at the Cumberland video, um, we were not in Tennessee, we were in Kentucky, but 
the rule for the Toyota series and for the BFLs is five wires, five baits, three or five wires, five baits, six, five blades, three hooks. That's what it is. Okay. Been a while since I fished the BFL, but I knew that. And that's what also the rule for the Toyota series. So um, I did throw an Alabama rig and an umbrella rig, and this is the one I threw. It's just a real light wire. Um, I like something that doesn't have a whole lot to it. You can have some that are, you know, like big and bulky that have a little bit different, bigger wires. Like, hold on, let me just grab this guy. Go. This is the one problem about Alabama rigs. You got them every which way. Uh, okay. So you got this guy right here. He's got a whole bunch of blades on him. Um, this is not a, this would not be a BFL rig. You could not throw him. <laughs> Too many dang blades on him, but he's a five wire. Um, and so, yeah, so that is like a lot more stiffer wheat, a lot stiffer wire. So you're not going to have the pulsing action, I guess would be the correct term. So anyway, so I have a few different rigs here. And, and a big key when you do, or if you're fishing BFLs or you're fishing, um, tournaments and they only allow you three hooks. Indiana is the same way. I think they're only allowed three hooks. Um, actually, this one's actually been out a little bit. Uh, the first thing you're gonna have to do is actually select the weight. The weight of the hook and the jig head that you're actually gonna throw. Just have this thing, okay. So actually the jig head that's my favorite, um, as of right now, it's, it's actually sort of a finesse style jig head. So I do not recommend like boat flipping 10 pounders. Um, but it has enough beef to it that I've had really good luck with this. And so I've actually just started using it this year, especially on lakes where you're catching a lot of two, three pounders. This is what I recommend just because I mean in smaller swim baits, cause this hook's not that big. Um, these are the new swim bait hooks from, it's the hybrid swim bait jig from BMC. Um, actually I worked with them in helping design this cause I felt like this was very needed in the fishing world, whether you're finesse swim baiting or you're throwing Alabama rig, whatever. This hook actually has, it's like a Sprout hybrid style hook, which I think it hooks them up a lot better. I mean, that's why I told them to make it. Is I said, this sucker right here is a bad dude. And that's why I was like, all right. So, but there's also other stuff that you, other jig heads you can use. You use like this, like jig head like right here. It's like more of like a quarter ounce. Um, there's like boxer style jig heads like right here. You can buy those pretty, pretty cheap. Um, and, and they have those big hooks. So they're a little bit thicker hooks. So I don't necessarily think that when selecting your jig head, um, you, you have to get too crazy, like technical with it. But I like, I like having this jig head because I can go like a 316th right here. And then I have the quarter right here. And that, like when I'm dialing that in for me, that's what works. So diving into how I set up a rig real quick here, because a lot of you fish BFLs, you fish stuff, uh, you fish Toyota series. And since this is legal, this is definitely a rig that you need to understand and under, understand why. Now this one right here, I've rigged up with two five sixteenths ounce weights right here. I actually have a three H right here. Um, the reason for that is I was trying to put more weight towards the bottom half of this rig. And when I go back up and I'll show you like, as I bring this bait through the water, you, these are your two dummies. You want them up top. Ideally the bass is going to come. If you watch a bass, you know, a lot of times he'll come up and go underneath the bait and then it'll come up and eat it. So a lot of times they'll either eat the center one that's further back like this guy, or they're going to eat the bottom two. Now this hook I've caught a ton of bass on, but you can actually tell I have tweaked that hook out a little bit just because I've been fun fishing this whole time. I have not even, I've just been him back out a little bit and called it good. So, so this trigger that I have in my hand right here, I think this is actually one from, uh, I'm pretty sure this is one from North Carolina. It's maybe ER Lures rig. So I actually bought a few of these. I don't know if it really truly matters that much. I do like the wire being thinner because I think it pulse, pulsates like the baits a little bit more. Um, so the big key though with an Alabama rig, if you're rigging one up and you can only throw three hooks on a five wire rig, Definitely put your weight towards the bottom. Ultimately keeping your dummies up. I use 16th ounce dummies and I super glue them to that little head right there. So that's why I do that. Just sort of set them up exactly like that and then cut those hooks off to where I have no barb or anything like that. I cut them completely off to where there's no chance of, of, um, of hooking a fish. Now, I would say the number one size hook or not, number one size uh, weight of a jig head that I'm gonna throw um, say I'm throwing this shallow 
five feet or less, 10 feet or less is probably the 316s, okay? So this guy right here is gonna be about perfect for that. If you're around a lot of places, like if you're not fishing for small mouth or you're like, if you're around a lot of places that have big ones, I recommend going to a stouter hook, like this boxer hook head or, you know, going to a beefier, thicker hook. Cause at the end of the day, you do have that big rod and you can, crack them like but you really don't want to set the hook like that like that's not the way if you're dc you set the hook like that is that right brody you still like Rah! and i actually figured this out okay just just like sort of like i always bring dc up because it's so funny i laugh at him all the time the reason he sets the hook that hard if you know who dc is he's dustin connell he's a buddy of mine one of my best friends um fishes the beach pt all that good stuff if you've seen him in the vlogs if you watch the channel at all he fished where like current and so when you have when you're fishing current like basically there's a lot of there's a lot of bow in your line he has to set the hook really hard to catch up with the fish so that's why it's like so hard i just like to give him crap so anyway going back to the a rig stuff and alabama rig stuff bigger hooks for bigger fish thicker hook meaning you don't have to have a big giant gaff of a hook i don't think that's going to ultimately help you catch more fish i think it's it's in the day like just a thicker hook it's the key you know and then you know smaller more finessey stuff so if you're spotted bass fishing all that stuff make sure your drag is a little bit looser if you are fishing this lighter hook um which i think it's like more like the finesse style thing it has like these like you know has a little eye, 3d eyes it's like has this little smaller hook it's what i like so now diving you can use this it's actually a super versatile rig you can actually go down to 16th up top or 16th through the whole rig you can use it up shallow fish around wood i even have a rig set up right here that i have and i actually will put individual baits on you know like i actually have these belly weighted so like if i'm fishing around wood say i want to reel this around wood and i don't want to get hung up no problem these two right here up here are dummies and i actually used to do this a lot you'll see that i have a hitchhiker on this guy i'm sort of you can sort of see it dang, dangling um there's a hitchhiker on this guy right here and the problem is with that is the bait spins okay so i know some people who say like oh just put a hitchhiker on it well I don't do it because I just want the whole rig to look natural. I mean, like imagine these three down here looking all great. And I mean, I guess this is like a goofy looking, you know, messed up shad spinning, but I'm not saying they won't bite it. I'm just saying I want it for me. It's, it doesn't look that great. So that's why I do that. Um, so I, that's why I go with the actual jig head. Even if it's like a 16th ounce crappie jig, I would recommend that. Go to 16th ounce crappie jig, cut the thing hook off or 32nd, cut the hook off and just insert it in there, put some super glue in there and you're good to go on the swim bait that you, you have choice. You don't even have to throw the swim bait necessarily that you like. I mean, but I, I sometimes do. So anyway, so you can actually go to belly weighted hooks if you like that. You're just, you're basically just attaching, um, you know, going through the eyelid of the hook um, and just attaching it to like this, these snaps. So most of you, it's pretty, pretty easy, pretty just, okay, click it on there and you're good to go. But I just sort of wanted to dial, dial into that. Um, and it's like a rig, the rig is like, so as I think about an Alabama rig and think about an umbrella rig and the tournaments it's won over the last few years, uh, last 10 years, I would say, or last four or five years I think it's been out. It's just, there is, there is a time and place for this, you know, and there's a time and place where you can catch really big fish on it. Um, it still catches big ones. It's definitely something you want to still have in your arsenal and if you can throw it and most of us can, I still do plenty, just have fun with it. I don't think it really should have been banned from the national tournament organizations. I think it's sort of just had, it's another tool. Um, but I, I think a lot of them freaked out a little bit. They didn't know what they were having because it was, I mean, to be honest, be honest with you, the first few years of that Alabama rig being out, umbrella rig being out, you could just wind it down the bank and catch bass. Like it was the simplest thing. Like it was unreal. Like it literally bass would come from miles away to buy it an umbrella rig. Now it's not the case. It's, they actually have become accustomed to it. It's a lot harder to get them to bite. And sometimes they'll even buy a single swim bait better than that. So basically what I'm saying is if you don't know, if you've not fished an umbrella rig, I wanted to show you guys sort of some of the variations of it. Um, and I, I'm going to actually tell you, this one's right here is one of my favorites as well. These are Shane's rigs. They're out of North Carolina as well. And then I think this is a hog farmer um, rig, which I'm not throwing it as much, but it is like a big heavier rig. So, hey. There's a lot of them out there. You guys can ultimately pick the one that looks the best to you. There's some that don't have blades. There's some with nine wires. There's some all over the place. It's all over the place. So you can use your imagination. Have fun with it. It's definitely something that you're going to want to have in your arsenal throughout the year. Cold water seems to be the best. But at the end of the day, you can probably catch a bass on this about any time of year. So check them out. If you guys want to know a little bit more about them, um, hey. 
just just you gotta throw them. <clears throat> so check them out. They're they're definitely a rig that ultimately. So I mean that's really a lot of what I know about Alabama rig fishing. I, I try to sort of run through most of it. Most of you you might know a lot about this. Some of you might have learned a few things. That's what all of this like how to rig it series is about. Some of you guys are beginner fishermen. Some of you are high school fishermen, college fishermen. If you are, drop a comment below. We truly appreciate the support Brody and I do. Um, hitting that like and subscribe. Make sure if you do not subscribe to the channel, subscribe. We really truly do appreciate every subscriber we have on this channel. And if you have something that you are like, hey Jacob, you've not talked about this, or I want to hear more about, like, hey, I don't know this about this. If if you want to drop a comment and tell me what you're looking for, or if there's a question that I can help you out with, I will try to do so. So thank you all for following along. We'll see y'all next time.